Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Good morning, Dana. So we're back for another amazing interview that you did. You've just been a busy bee with these interviews. <laughs> I have been a busy bee with these interviews. But, you know, we had over 300 people live watching these interviews. And then, I don't know, I think almost a 1,000 that ended up uh, registering that we sent the recording. I mean, they've been good. So That's I was just so grateful good. that these amazing speakers agreed to do it. <laughs> Yep, I love it. I love it. Well, we are we are uh, we do have great people who love to share and don't worry about somebody else losing so that they can win. And I love that, right? That's the way we all should be. I don't care what company we're with or who we're with. That's really the way we all should be in this industry totally. because I've just found the more you share, the more abundance comes into the industry. So, let's just keep giving and sharing and helping each other all win bigger, right? Yep, I totally totally agree. So today, I'm super excited for our listeners to hear a great interview with David Morse. He is the CEO of a uh, top Keller Williams Market Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, he's an investor. He also, Linda, we need, you know what, we need to have he and Joe on our podcast. They also have a great podcast called the All In Podcast. Um, and he talks tons of great real estate uh, advice. So he would be one for our subscribers to go listen to as well. But today, he's going to talk about being an influencer in the real estate industry, developing your marketing and your branding, and just growing your social media presence, which is something that everybody's trying to do more of right now. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So we'll let you guys listen to David, and then we'll come back at the end for a quick little recap and share some of our aha. So we hope you enjoy David Morse. Thanks for uh, being on and taking the time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. And uh, I'm sorry that I was about 60 seconds late. Literally, my microphone blew up. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you just uh, you roll the punches. So I hope the audio is OK. <laughs> you sound great. You sound All amazing. Right. Um, we've had we've had some great guests so far. We just ended with Jason. So you get to follow. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like I, that's kind of uh, been something it. in my career that's a, a regular thing. So <laughs> You are the perfect person to follow, Jason. Um, I have like an all around the, the world different topics I want you to talk about today. But first, will you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your background and then we'll jump into our questions. Yeah, sure thing. Hi, everyone. My name is David Morris. I'm the CEO um, of Killer Williams Arizona Realty in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, we are just about to cross 400 agents Ooh, um, and, uh, and we will be the first uh, market center in the Southwest region to uh, do that. We're really excited. Um, I also have the privilege of being the host of the All In Real Estate podcast, um, as well as I'm a real estate investor, founder of a networking group and resource uh, site called Real Folio. Um, that equips real estate investors with knowledge, networking, and new opportunities. So those are a few of the uh, different hats that I get to wear. Um, in all of them, the foundation is just serving other people so they can live big, joy-filled lives. Love it so much. Um, congrats on your almost 400 agents. That is amazing and a huge milestone. Um, I love, I, one of the, my favorite things about Keller Williams is the people that I've gotten to meet through, and really, really just being in the real estate industry in general. Um, but I lo I've loved just getting to know you and follow you and watch everything that you're doing. I think it's so awesome. Uh, one of the things I really wanted you to talk about today is how agents can use social media and branding and marketing. And we, we all toss around this word influencer uh, now, right? It's like everyone wants to be an influencer. Um, yet you can use that in such a powerful way when it comes to growing a business. And so I was hoping you'd speak a little bit uh, into that. And then we can kind of go yeah. from there and build questions too. Yeah, sure thing. And hearing you say that, uh, Dana, my mind immediately goes to the bold law, be, do, achieve. Right. And, and if I heard you correctly, you you said something that's so true. Everyone wants to be an influencer. Here's the deal. All of you on here are influencers. Right. And so I don't like that term, first off, because I feel like a lot of times we 
think that we have to hit some type of milestone before we can be considered an influencer. Guys, leadership is influence. And every single one of you leads clients, you lead brokerages, you know, whatever. And, and so I think that, first of all, getting in the frame of mind of being an influencer, you are that already. And so influence those that are in your sphere. The only thing that might be different is the size of that network that you're influencing. And, and so um, I think we have a great opportunity inside of real estate to influence other people to make purchase decisions as well as to take the next right steps for them. Yep. Love it. Okay. Perfect. So walk us through kind of how you're, how you coach some of your agents and how you've built even your own brand and, and any pieces of value you can give them on that. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so another thing, when we, when we coach agents, I think that social media in particular is often seen as um, the A, the, people think of it as like an A to C, Z inside of the sales funnel. And really social media is just the foundation. I, I was talking on a different podcast recently about, you know, sometimes agents like to substitute the real belly to belly interactions that are required in a sales transaction because they just want to do the social media work. But when's the last time you both sourced a deal and closed a deal inside of Instagram or TikTok? Almost no agent out there has done that. Right. And so when you're thinking about your social media strategy, you need to be thinking of social media and brand awareness as top of funnel activity that gives you more at bats with in person appointment. You can hold an appointment virtually, you can hold it through social media. And yet you've got to remember and keep in the front of your mind that the close happens in person 99% of the time. OK, and, and so that's one thing. And I see that especially with new agents. They come in and they say, hey, I'm going to go all in on social media. And that's great. But you've got to understand where it fits in the transaction. OK, um, another thing that I think is really important is really finding your voice. Every platform has a native language. And so naturally, every single one of you are going to have um, uh, more success with certain platforms. Like, I mean, Dana, you're amazing on Instagram, right? You, you're super good on Instagram. And Instagram is a photo and video heavy. Other people, I love writing. And so you'll frequently see long term or long form writing on Facebook or LinkedIn. You've got to find the message that communicates for you and go all in on the platform that speaks the same native language. Does that make sense? Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, 100 percent. I think it's um, I think it's kind of something that uh, Danny actually touched on earlier. We're talking about big, huge client events. Um, you have to do what is real to you and what you love to do and what you're comfortable with. And then you can grow and expand that and just go deep on that. Yeah, d definitely. I think that social media is an opportunity for you to really highlight more than just closings and listings and all the all the things that we so often do. If you're going to truly use social media to grow your business, you need to think of it just like you would any other type of lead generation and lead conversion activity in your business. It's going to take time. It's going to take energy. And so just, you know, buying the same 30 templates that every other agent uses in your market is not going to get the job done. What's the piece of value that you can offer on a consistent basis such that people continue to come back to you for information because of course that's what the consumer wants. They don't want an agent on demand. They want information on demand. And so what's the that's information? Well, and great. full disclosure, that's not original to me. So that's some, someone in our company has said that. I think many I times, heard Gary so. say that. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Another thing that I've seen massive success for realtors in their business is combining and this kind of goes back to what i was saying with that the transaction always finishes physical right um is when you're developing your social media and brand strategy think to yourself how can i make both virtual and um, physical communities and bring those together um and so 
you know, you have your mindset group, for instance, yep. right? Um, and I don't know if there's any type of in-person component to that yet. However, if you're going to go all in on Facebook groups, what I've found is that if you can do that online and then complement or supplement it with some type of in-person networking that brings that community closer together, you're going to see greater value. So when I launched Real Folio, for instance, that started as an online resource available to people. And yet the in-person tribe building of meeting on a monthly basis created stickiness so that throughout the month and between the meetings, people continued to come back to the resources that were available to them. I okay. love that. I think that's a huge aha because every agent that's listening or watching this or will in the future think about something that you could do to have a virtual aspect of it and then bring them together. It's almost, um, and actually Kimberly next is going to talk about seminars. And I think that that is another great thing. I mean, we, a lot of us have been doing them virtually and figuring out a way to build a community virtually and then bringing it into the physical world too, just to keep it. I, I think that's genius. Well, and, and again, let's credit, credit Gary, because that goes back to, you know, the market center of the future, even, and bringing together the physical and, and the virtual. And yeah. so how do we become social media enabled agents, right? Um, it's by creating powerful moments like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking notes too, you guys. So you guys are hopefully as well. Um, okay. What advice are you giving agents right now to stay relevant in, in the industry when it comes to it, really anything in general, but specifically ex client experience still based off building the brand and all that stuff? Yeah. So one of the things that as far as, because I mean, social media specifically, the algorithms are always changing and things yeah. like that. So you've got to be constantly on um, the hunt to how do I provide the most value? And one of the areas, I mean, I'll throw this out there because I've not seen it done yet. And I think there's a pile of gold hiding under this feature, Instagram guides. Hmm. And I think that the agent who goes all in on Instagram guides and starts developing and creating guides specific to the home purchase, the home sale. They have different types of guides for neighborhoods, just like you did 10 years ago on your website. You know, like here, we have golf course communities. How can you create Instagram guides for all of the golf course communities in your area such that when someone goes on and searches, they're getting your guide? And I think there's a mountain of gold under there, Dana. So I, there, there you go. There's my one like challenge. If any of you guys do that, I want you to reach out to me, DM me and show me because I want to, I want to see someone take action on that and have massive success. Um, and then um, as far as, you know, client experience um, with social media, um, lost my train of thought. Uh, while you're, while you're, um, I've, I've never thought about Instagram guides like that before. So I'm, I hope that Sarah Weber is writing that down right now too. Cause, oh, she is. I see her. Okay. I'm like, yes, we are on that. <laughs> so I will definitely credit one of my agents here in Scottsdale has started down the path of doing that. And um, so we'll start seeing some results in three to six months. Wow. Um, and, and I think you guys, I, like I said, I think it's a mountain of gold that's under there. Yeah. Um, what did you, if, if you didn't remember your thought, I have another question. Go for another question. Okay. Okay. Can we talk, will you touch on just overall brand? I feel like that you have, you have the ability to create such a consistent brand. And I love that. And I think a lot of it is your super talented wife and her amazing uh, photography skills. <laughs> and also what advice would you give people? Because a lot of times we talk about I think realtors sometimes forget that they are their brand, you know, it's, it's a brand. So we speak a little bit about that because David, when I go to your stuff and you guys have to all go follow David on Instagram, if you're not already and subscribe to his podcast and all the things, what you will see is it's all very consistent and it's not even just your Instagram grid, but just everything from your market center marketing to your podcast marketing, to your social media marketing, to your uh, real folio, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's a brand. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think, yes, I will credit my, my wife as well, just because I did not have an artistic bone in my body. I did not think creatively whatsoever. And so, you know, being together for 15, 16 years now, um, we'll do that to you. It, you start becoming like each other. Um, it starts with, I, I'll say this, um, every person's brand communicates something. Yeah. And you've got to ask the question, what is it that I want to communicate? And so who, what are the brands that you want to emulate, right? And so, you know, Brady, and, Brady Sandal and I talk about the, the brands that we want luxury agents or agents who sell luxury to emulate Nordstrom, Ritz Carlton, these yeah. different companies that we look up to aesthetically brand wise, what are the companies that you look up to start there? And then a very, <clears throat> a very actionable step after that is develop a style guide. And that can sound very fancy and very daunting. Well, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you guys, um, I'll email it to you, Dana, just some resources okay. where you can um, pair fonts together. You can pick color palettes and that's what you need to do. And then you need to stick to it. So everything, and I'll just relate it back to this in Market Center, right? Because that's that's where I'm living this out. Um, when Luxury released their new um, their new brand standards, I said, scrap everything, convert everything to Jost font, because that matters. A simple font does matter. It communicates. And so the podcast, my networking, everything converted to that font. All right. What you're doing is you're eliminating confusion for the consumer. Okay. Yep. And that's what you've got to remember. I think we're in an industry sometimes where, you know, you have Dana Gentry real estate powered by Keller Williams at consultants at, and what yep. all that does to the consumer is it creates confusion. Totally. And true. so how are we How are we paring down and clarifying our message? One very simple way is by having the same color palette and the same fonts that we use consistently and having a vocabulary. Like I said about social media platforms, every platform has a native language. You have native words that need to show up all the time. So example, can you, you yeah, will can see- Can you give us some examples of yours? Yeah, so in my social media, you will see the word opportunity mm -hmm. and the word joy show up all the time. Mm -hmm. Because I want agents here locally to know that if you want a bigger joy-filled life or you want more opportunity in your life, there's this guy who hops on, harps on opportunity and joy all the time in real estate, and that's David. What are those words for you? What do you want your clients to think of? Put those in, even when it doesn't seem to necessarily like go hand in hand. You know, if your word is persistence, persistence should be showing up in your captions all over the place. Yep. I love that. I love that I get so many great ahas from doing this too. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Gosh, how many minutes do I have? Eight. Okay. Oh man. Um, what, while I look through my questions, what else did, I know you had some thoughts, anything that we haven't touched on so far that you want to share? Um, I think one of the things that I get lots of questions about is not social media per se, but it is building a brand is yeah. the podcast. Yes. Um, and obviously, um, agents in your region get a lot about podcasts, I'm sure, because of your very successful podcast with Linda, which is fantastic. If anyone's on here and hasn't subscribed, subscribe to Everything Life in Real Estate. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that as an influencer, you have to be thinking amplify. How do I amplify? Yeah. And And it doesn't have to be a full-blown podcast per se, but even something simple like downloading Anchor. Anchor is a very uh, easy to use, handheld, you know, mobile app that you can record podcasts on. The key is just being consistent. So when we launched the podcast, I said, we're releasing an episode every single week. Yeah. That was and one of the hardest things that we did. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, I mean, I you get four or five... Like we're like, man, this is the most consistent we've ever been with the one thing. I mean, it, it is, it's a commitment. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And there's times where I'll be four five, six weeks ahead in the hopper. And then just a couple holidays or one of them, yep. you know, I have a co-host, we go out of town. And, and so we've had to think creatively about how to, how to scale that, you know? So we just added a third co-host to bring in, you know, that another element. 
Yeah. You, you know, um, for a long time, my wife has joked around and said, you, you need a woman on there. And yeah. uh, so we went out and we found a powerhouse female uh, who brings a great different perspective. And she's uh, she interviewed her first interview was with Mike McCann. So, I mean, throw her right in the ringer. Like, <laughs> love it. That's awesome. I yeah, love I'm that. happy to share anything from a podcast perspective, too, that we've learned um, over, you know, we have 60 some episodes now um, and it's had great results, great staying yeah. power. It would, if there's an agent out there, I mean, I know there's many on, I see some of you on here that I've had podcast conversations with as an agent, why would they want to do a podcast? I think the podcast is more about providing value to agents for you. Okay. More than it is about closed transactions. So I think just the awareness of building a podcast as a real estate agent so that you can uh, cultivate agent to agent referral relationships is probably more valuable. It also positions you as an authority. And anytime I can be positioned as an authority on something, um, that is a win for me and for my agents. And so find what that niche is for you inside of podcasting. Don't use podcasting as a um, direct lead generation technique for your sales business. Those things will happen, but it will happen as a byproduct of providing value to a different audience, most likely. Okay. Um, one thing that we haven't talked about that I would love for you to touch on is the luxury market. We have a lot of agents that would love to up their average sales price, tap into the luxury market. I know you are a big part of that. Um, will you talk to us just a little bit about what advice you would give to an agent who wants to kind of get more into the luxury price point? Yeah, sure. So when you're increasing your average sale price, I mean, as it, it and I'm, I'll relate, you want me to relate this to social media and brand branding? Anything. Yeah. In, that or anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, generally the most, the most general principle about breaking into that market is you need to have a database with that type of net worth. And so if you don't, then you need to figure out a way to consistently add people to your database that transact luxury real estate. I know that sounds basic. Um, I had the opportunity. I was sitting down, uh, uh, Jeanette Spinelli. Um, a couple of weeks ago and Jeanette's out of the Austin market, her average price point was $99,000. She needed to make more money than that. It was like 12 years ago. And so she figured out, wow, I got to quadruple my average price point to make the income to support my family after a tragedy, her fiance had passed away. And so what did she do? She said, well, I need to figure out who the people are transacting in that price point and I need to go meet them. Mm. And so I know that's not rocket science, but where are you going to meet these people? Yeah. Figure that out. And yeah. I don't know what, where that is in Ohio, uh, the Ohio Valley, um, but you've got to figure that out. When it comes to um, playing in luxury price points in social and building that brand, I think you have to simply put your knowledge on full display from a financial, right? So the high net worth individuals that I tend to communicate with communicate economically. They need to know that you are the economist of choice for their situation, okay? And from an aesthetic standpoint, I do place a high value on having a brand that communicates aesthetically, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, there is no lure in a, in a draw to certain brands. And so if you desire to be there, okay, back to be to achieve, start creating a style, a brand guide that emulates brands that cater to luxury clientele. Can you um, give an example? You, well, you touched on one thing. I mean, so for you, for luxury, what would be a couple of things that, you're, that the brand would need to emulate? Yeah, so I, I think that um, light and dark, stark contrast color palette is very important. Yeah. I think tall, narrow font, yeah. okay? Those are something that you consistently see. I don't necessarily buy into, um, you know, flash in the Rolex and those different things because here's the, here's the other part of this conversation. More and more of the luxury market is dominated by millennials who think differently or acquire their wealth differently than previous generations. Wow. It's not uncommon in Scottsdale to have 
a 22 year old with a $50 million net worth that he acquired because of his Bitcoin to walk in in a t-shirt and jeans, Mm. right? So even inside of the luxury market, I think you need to figure out who am I communicating to? Is it the young software startup or is it the, you know, I'm from New England originally. There's a lot of old world money, you know, in previous generations, those communicate differently. And so from a branding standpoint, you can have clients in both and you need to figure out the careful way that you communicate to those. Does that make sense? Absolutely. deeper on that? No, nope, okay. I think that, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I think that's, I'm, I'm, I'm taking all kinds of notes. Um, so, okay. So lastly, one minute, as we wrap up before Kimberly hops on to talk about her amazing seminars, um, what's the one piece of advice that you would give a realtor who is looking to just up their game the second half of this year with their branding and, or their social media, or just their their overall um, appearance on on platforms and on technology to their people. All right, you ready for this? It's gonna make your life way easier. I want you to produce five pieces of content every single week. And when you do that, I want you to ask the question, how do each of these become five additional pieces of content? Okay, what? tell us what you mean by that. What I mean by that is we too often, you create something and only use it once. Yeah, I'm bad about that. If if you have a video that's one minute long and it provides immense value, that also needs to become an infographic. That also needs to be a long form text telling that same story in text. That also could be an anchor podcast. That also could be, that's what I want you to do. So with that market update, rather than posting it as one frame on your Instagram, I want you to level up and I want you to follow that frame with a video explaining that frame. And then I want you to level up yet again. And I want you to long form that into three paragraphs and post it on LinkedIn. You just made your life way easier because you only exerted the energy to create the one piece. And then you spoke it into five different native languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's what I that's what I'd love to see agents do love that we might need to have you back on to go deeper with that yes uh okay this has been amazing I can't thank you enough I know that you are a busy person so thank you for your time R- really quick how can they contact you if they would like to be in your world um your Instagram your podcast one more time all right I'll drop it in the chat as well okay perfect. um yeah. and it's David Morse at kw.com My cell phone is 207-939-8349, okay? And then on Instagram, Facebook, everything, I'm David D. Morse, like Morse code, beep, 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 (laughs) beep. And I'm all about helping you guys live a bigger, joy-filled life. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. This is humbling to be with you guys. I love uh, love helping you. And Dana, um, you're definitely one of my, my role models in this company. Thank you. And right back at you. And I love, yes, thank you. I love everything you do. So thank you so much. We'll do this again soon. All right. See ya. (laughs) Thank you. Let's show David some uh, love in the chat. And oh my gosh, you guys, I took a ton of notes. So hopefully you got a lot from that also. So Dana, that was an amazing interview. I love David. He is awesome. Yes. Very talented. I stalk his, all of his Instagram stuff <laughs> and, and uh, try to emulate some of his styles. They, he just has a great eye for marketing and branding anyway, but yeah, he's, he's very, uh, very talented. Well, and it sounds like his wife is talented too. So oh that's my God. another, another proof of collaboration. Yes. And she's a, gosh, she's a great traveling photographer, but yeah, she, she is awesome as well. Um, okay. What were some of your, did you have any big takeaways or anything that you thought from that one? That you well, liked? you know, some, was something new that was for me was to use the same colors and the same font on everything. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and I think this has been true throughout everything you do in your business. You tend to think you need to change things. And I remember this years ago in marketing my business and my brand, you know, we need to stop changing just because we're bored with it. The truth yeah. is you need to find something that, that works and stick with it. The same font and the same colors. That was a huge aha for me. 
Yep, I love that too. That was one of the reasons why we recently redid our cover photo because I was like, you know what? We talked, we're like, let's let's make it to where it's the same and everything's consistent. And I love like the the black and white that he suggested. It really, you know, grabs your attention. And, and some stuff does pop more than other stuff does. Um, and so I like that. One of the things that I love that he said is, and this was a huge aha for me, um, is that you should eliminate confusion to the consumer as much as possible. So really letting your brand and your social media and everything that you do, because both of us do a lot of different things. And so it's like, are, is the consumer confused? That was what I left thinking. Do you think they're confused? Yes. Like, what the heck does Dana do? Or what the heck does Linda do? And so I thought, okay, I'm going to try to figure out ways to just eliminate the confusion as much as possible and make the make the different businesses because as entrepreneurs you know you always want to have different businesses and we're always into something different and how could we make those more cohesive to where it eliminates as much confusion to the consumer as possible and i think what you started with was the biggest key to that like making them at least look the same you know look like the same brand and same colors and same fonts and all of those things yeah, and you know, Dana, it's so funny because um, we we always like to say as an entrepreneur, we really like the new, new thing. So we're on to this and off to chasing this rabbit and chasing this squirrel all the time. And um, we just not too long ago did an audit on on my website. And that's exactly what the lady said. She said, really? I'm not really sure what, what you do. <laughs> she said, you know, it's not clear. Yep. And so I, I think that's so important because... The consumer's confused. They don't know how to do business with you. And I think you need to really make it simple and easy and um, and clear who yep. you are. And, what you do. and I loved his two words, joy and opportunity. I That's love what I wrote down. That's what I said. That was my favorite. That was my favorite thing he said. Me too. And the part, I wrote that down. I have that highlighted. And the thing that I loved about that was he said, use the same vocabulary. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've heard the same fonts and the same colors. I'm not consistent with it, but I've heard it multiple times. But I've never thought about the same vocabulary, and he's and it's true. If you follow him on a regular basis, like I do, he consistently talks about opportunity and joy and fun. Opportunity and joy, like it's all the time. It's a constant. It's a it's a consistent vocabulary pattern that shows up in his captions, in his talking, and everything that he does. Well, and guess who that's going to attract to you in your world? The people that work for you are going to be attracted to joy, opportunity, and fun. Yep. They're going to be joyful, opportunist, and fun. Uh, the clients you attract are going to be joyful, opportunist, and fun. So, I mean, what better thing to do than to use the words of who you want to attract, right? And it'll repel all the people that don't want to have joy and don't want to have fun and don't want to look for opportunities together. So yep. I love that because it does so much more than you realize. It not it re makes it real. And I think subliminally it attracts those kind of people to him. Yep. And I, I just was reading... I like that he said every person's brand communicates something. What do you want your brand to emulate? And really our brand should communicate who we want to attract and what we want to attract. Um, and he does a great job of that. You know, it's so funny. My aha too when I was listening to him is we're looking for a director of uh, digital marketing. And what I realize is what words are we using to attract the kind of person that will naturally put out into the world the words and the and the energy we want put out. So I'm going to take this and re totally rewrite the ad that we are running for this digital uh, marketing person that we're looking well, for. Well, we have a lot of people that listen to this podcast, so you'll have to share that on here uh, because yeah. maybe somebody that's listening knows somebody or is interested. Yeah, or maybe they want to get a digital marketer and they could use the same ad. Yep, yeah. I'll, I'll work that and that I'll share that on the podcast. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, I just loved listening to David. I took two pages of notes, <laughs> um, and I loved his takeaway, produce five pieces of content each week. And he he really was the one that encouraged uh, me to think about how can we repurpose a lot of the content that we have that's so good that maybe not everybody has been having access to. So I just think he was amazing. Yeah, and the other one last thing that I'll share that I liked about what he said, and I've, I've said this before, is he, he he emphasized to do what's unique in your unique ability. Don't just because you know I think we tend to, and I know Danny's interviews coming up. I know I think we tend to watch someone and say, oh, well, I want to do exactly what they're doing, 
And it's so funny because years ago I did this with a mission statement. I flipping could not come up with a mission statement. So I stole the guys that sold real estate up in Ohio. I'm like, I like this one. I'll just steal. And later I realized it, it, that was him. I needed to come up with what was me. And so he said this and I loved it is you really have to say, what is your voice? Is it writing? Is it video? And, you know, and then don't give up if one thing doesn't work. And I've told this before on the podcast, you know, I don't like to do video and stuff alone. I think I work much better with a collaborator, someone, uh, which by the way, I thought of a great idea for a new podcast, two simplifiers and a multiplier or two multipliers and a simplifier. And everything that comes along, we could say from the simplifying way, how would you simplify this? And from the multiplier, how would you multiply that? It? You know, you and I don't need a no host of new ideas anyway. <laughs> But I think the point he made was learn yourself well enough to know of the digital world, which piece could you actually get up and enjoy doing? Because I think when it's uniquely fits you and you enjoy it, you'll you'll look forward to it and you'll do more of it. You just don't want to dread it. You don't want to dread it all the time. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. A hundred percent. And he, he said, find the message uh, to you. That's true. Like find your true mm -hmm. message. And I was like, man, I absolutely Love that so much. Um, yeah, so he was great. And you so, talk about this, Dana, I think this could be a reinvention in real estate. Well, it super gets me excited that that could make real estate so much more fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're engaging with your people in a way that is authentic and fun to you. And you're giving them service like we, we learned when we listened to Jason that that is unique and they love. And then you know, we're, we're giving, we have that uh, insights that's given us extra help to, to deliver at a high level. I just think real estate, because honestly, I got, I started doing other things 12 years into the business, 200 transactions a year, year after year, because I was bored with the way we were doing it. When I hear this stuff, I get super pumped. I get super excited. I get energized. And I think it could be a reinvention that really wakes us all up and makes us just really love what we do at a higher level. I totally agree. It just reminds me of Danny because, I mean, gosh, he loves what he does. And he said yeah. people just think that I'm the guy that throws these big parties, you know. But he's like, I love that. That's his thing. Uh, and it yeah. energizes him. And then in the meantime, he sells a lot of real estate from that, too. Yeah, love and it. Same with Kimberly, who is coming up, too. And Kimberly said she loves First time home buyers. And so she created the first time home buyer seminar. And I mean, she's done almost 40 million in volume from first time home buyer seminars. Like, I mean, it's just that she loves it. That's her passion and gives her energy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I can't wait. I'm super excited for our next interview, Dana. That's going to be so fun. And I, I know our audience, I'd love to hear, by the way, uh, give us the thumbs up if you're loving these interviews and recaps. And if you, um, if you, if you haven't hit subscribe, be sure and do that. And then also the greatest compliment you can give us and let us know that you love these is pass these on to someone else in the industry that you really feel like would benefit from these conversations. And if you have a, an opportunity, a challenge or a question or someone you think we should interview, reach out to us at info at everything life and real estate. And Dana, I'm super excited. Can't wait for our next interview. And I'll see you over at that interview. Sounds good. See you then. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.